How's it going, Teal Boys? It is the offseason for us. Um, because we're still in the middle of the playoff, uh, one of the placeholders, or the way they do placeholders, to set up the playoff is it puts us against a weird team for now. So it shows that we lost to Troy, even though we didn't. Instead, what we did was lose an unfortunate one to Oklahoma. I'm still very disappointed about that game. Um, it hurts. It hurts a lot. So... Let's just try to move on to the next season. Let's get hurt by the bad recruiting that I did this uh, this year. And also, let's go ahead and sim our national championship right off the bat. It's going to be between Oklahoma and Texas. Uh, we want the Sooners to win because it makes us look better when we lost to them. You know, losing to the national champion is better than losing to the runner-up. But we'll see what happens. Sim the game, and I didn't fully see it. Texas does win 46 to 37, a high scoring affair. Oklahoma does lose the game, a little bit disappointing. Um, just a, a big enough fourth quarter for Texas holds off, uh, even built the lead a little bit. Uh, disappointing for us, but hey, sorry that we couldn't do it with Grayson. Hopefully. We can make a, a little run back to the playoffs next year with Radon at the helm. Hopefully we don't lose too many guys. Let's go ahead and save this and finalize the playoff and move to the offseason. Alrighty, so let's go to our step four to finalize the playoffs. And it should load in and show everything being completed properly. And there it is. Our champions, unfortunately, the Longhorns of Texas. We just couldn't quite do it from our sixth seed. Maybe uh, maybe next year we can be in the two or the one spot or maybe the four. Something a little bit better for us would be nice. But we'll go ahead and save that. And uh, then, you know, we'll have our champions and we can move on. So there it goes. Shows it being uh, the proper bowl game now. Uh, we can go ahead and take a look at the uh, the bowl standings or the bowl games. You know, actually, let's send to the end of the bowl season first. And, uh, wow, end of the bowl season. Here we go. It's maybe multiple records. A career uh, passing touchdown record for the school. Grayson sets it at 73, just barely beating Alex Ross's. Uh, just a touchdown there. That's impressive. Only only one there. We finished the season at number six. So that's fine with me. Uh, painful setback indeed for us there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the bowl results. I'll scroll through the ones that don't uh, matter quite as much to us as we head towards the New Year's Six. That's a big game between Notre Dame and Purdue. Good for Notre Dame to win that. That helps our conference. Uh, you know, we really do root for our conference since it helps our recruiting. Uh, Miami beating Oklahoma, or Ohio State is very good. Clemson, I don't like that they lost to a 9-5 USC. That's pretty rough. Pitt went ahead and lost to Iowa State. So I guess we're on the losing end on a lot of these battles. Um, Boston College lost. Louisville lost. Syracuse beat Auburn, though. So that's pretty good. And here we go. Some of the, the playoff matchups. Oregon... And Texas in the Peach Bowl, that was a semifinal one. We had the Rose Bowl where Texas beat Cincinnati. We had the Fiesta Bowl with Oklahoma beating Alabama. That was our other semifinal. Then Alabama beating Michigan. Us losing to Oklahoma. Penn State losing to Oregon. And was that all of them? Yeah, I guess just the the, the finals. Texas beating Oklahoma. Um, again, some, some of this stuff gets a little bit weird, like it's showing 10-17, but the real sco score was 46-37, uh, to 37. so it can get a little bit wonky, but as long as the records are correct, that's what we're excited about. Texas ends the season perfect, 15-0, so good for them. Could be 16-0 if they were from a conference with a conference championship, but... Uh, you know, they, they come out on the good side of not having to, to play in a conference championship. So the, maybe the reason why both of those teams even made the playoffs. Uh, but that's our bowl results. So I guess let's go to the off season. Now we do have a bunch of recruiting battles happening, but the problem is we're not going to win a whole lot of these. 
I just don't, I don't know. I'm worried about how things are going to go. Bunch of XP there at the end, which is nice. And so, wow, I've never heard that, that noise before. They have offered us a contract extension. Uh, we'll probably sign it a five-year extension. Look at that. Nine and four, 10 and three. Uh, with the Sunbelt Championship, 9-5, and five, then 11-3 and three with the ACC Championship, but very okay, pretty close, but just not quite making that final step. We will sign this contract extension. Gotta stay with the team. And let's go ahead and take a look at the coaching carousel. Um, we'll sim through a couple of these ones. Mel Tucker getting fired from Michigan State. Uh, but we'll go ahead and see what crazy stuff happens we'll look at a couple of these and then i'll sim through and we'll we'll look at, at what happens as they hire marcus freeman from san jose state or no they hired pritchard from louisiana lafayette i guess the other guy said no i'm very confused oh he was hired by the Rajan cajuns very very confusing all over the place let's just look at these next two texas a&m and ucla uh, Texas A&M will hire Graham Harrell, the, what was he, the offensive coordinator at Texas. Uh, UCLA is fired, Chip Kelly, and they're going to hire Kalani Satake from the, well, the defensive coordinator from Texas. I guess he moved at some point. Virginia Tech uh, lost their head coach to UAB. They will hire Mike New, who was the head coach at Ball State. And, uh, yeah, we have a bunch of this stuff. PJ Fleck and uh, Bronco Mendenhall getting fired, but we'll skip to the end of the uh, the coaching carousel and see what crazy stuff happens. Oh, my goodness. Well, if we look at the bottom, I think we got new coordinators, and it looks to be pretty incredible. Who did we pick up? Uh, let's just look at head coaching stuff first, and then uh, we'll see... Anything crazy happening? Let's uh, let's look at just to scroll through who changed what. Chip Kelly is now at Arkansas State. Uh, Chad Staggs, our previous uh, coordinator. I don't remember if he was an offensive or defensive, but he's now the head coach of Fresno State. So good for him. Bodie Reader, I feel like, was our head coach. Uh, or was our other coordinator. So both of our coordinators now head coaches, uh, one at Indiana. Very interesting there. Any other crazy stuff? Will Muschamp gets fired from South Carolina. They go with Marcus Freeman. Jimbo Fisher has been f uh, fired from Texas A&M. So he's replaced by Graham Harrell. Willie Taggart replaces Bronco Mendenhall at Virginia. Slick Willie, see how long he lasts there. Andy Avalos uh, goes to Louisiana Lafayette. I feel like he'll do a, a solid job there. And everybody else is just extensions. So nothing in, you know, ridiculously crazy. But how about uh, just what happened with our team? We have new coordinators, which is pretty crazy to me. We get Jason Candle, who, where was he at before this? I don't know if we get to know, but it sounds like he's a, a really good coordinator. So definitely not upset with that. But I'm not sure we know where he came from. Uh, Bronco Mendenhall is our new defensive coordinator, which is pretty crazy there. Uh, so number, uh, level 27 defensive coordinator. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure he's not happy about being fired from a head coaching job and going to a defensive coordinator in the same conference. Definitely fine with, uh, how this has worked out though for us. And here it is. He's been here the whole time. He must have been promoted at some point, but Jason Candle was the previous head coach at Toledo. So they fired him, interestingly enough. What did he do the past couple of years? Ooh, three and nine last year. I'm not necessarily surprised by that, but we come out looking fantastic. We didn't quite level up. Oh, if we would have leveled up, things would be looking so, so good for us. But let's just go ahead and get these skill trees pretty much maxed out. Um, We got a lot going for us here. Let's just throw the points in. I don't, I don't really think it matters all too much where we go with them so we have the raw talent and the pure instinct just maxed out um purely like fully maxed out uh defensive coordinator now 
27 is as high as you can go on levels. Uh, and Bronco Mendenhall is 31. So this here with our coordinators is honestly going to make up for a lot of our recruiting woes this season. Um, I mean, the fact that all of our players become that much better, better at tackling, which is incredible, better at catching the ball, how many dropped interceptions we have, and then just better athletes in general. Um, my goodness, that is fantastic. Jason Candle's great as well. Let's go ahead and just level things up as much as we can here. Um, the Great Wall and the Bulldozer will help our lines, and then... We can go ahead and get the Mathlete and the Athlete pretty much maxed out. Athlete's great. Mathlete's also great getting the awareness. And just like that, our our team has become so much better, I think. Uh, if we would have had those guys for the, the, the previous season, I'm not sure we would have lost in the first round of the playoffs. So incredible changes for us as we will look at our players leaving. This is where it gets sad. Oh, this hurts. Grayson McCall, 93 overall, projected to go in the seventh round of the draft. It'll be sad to see him leave. Um, Honestly, kind of interesting career. 73 touchdowns to 62 interceptions. We threw 18 picks this year. 64% completion uh, for his career. Have a QB rating of 152, but the rushing was fantastic. 41 rushing touchdowns, 13 of them coming this year. He did have uh, a couple of fumbles, three of them this year, including a very big one in the playoff game. But all in all, just a fantastic player. The, the only thing that really hurts him is that throw power and throw accuracy. It's a little bit low, um, but just a, a fast guy. Good awareness. Uh, Good stamina. Never got really injured for us. We'll miss you, Grayson. What a player. Next up, unfortunately, two more 90 overall players. We've got the wide receiver and Aaron Bedgood. And again, not the fastest guy. Only 80 speed, but just a great possession guy. Um, 1,600 total receiving yards on the career. Only one touchdown this year. On only eight total uh, in his career, we utilized him not much this year, 22 yards per game, but 41 on the season, 11 drops through his career, but just a, a very solid, dependable guy who came up with just big plays when you didn't expect to see it. And then we go to the defensive tackle in Rashad Chaney Jr. I got to imagine he had a pretty solid season this year, only really played two seasons with us. Uh, but six sacks last year is fantastic, or this year, I guess. Nine total. 16 tackles a little bit low, but seven of them for loss is very impressive. We'll lose Donnell Wilson, our center. But how about this? An outside linebacker in Charles Steele. Uh, just a great guy. Really held things together. Three sacks this season, but had an interception. Forced a fumble, you know, uh... Knocked a couple of passes away. 59 tackles, 17 of them for losses. Staying along this linebacker trend, we'll lose another starting linebacker at our 84 overall middle linebacker, Mason Shelton. 73 tackles, 10 of them for loss with two sacks. Uh, four deflections, one forced fumble. So, you know, didn't like create a crazy amount of chaos, but the 10 tackles for loss is pretty big and just 73 tackles in general is big uh losing a couple of defensive backs as well roger reed will be going he had a sack and three interceptions on the season um i mean three interceptions for our team is a crazy amount five tackles for loss on his 33 we'll definitely miss roger very quick 96 speed 91 acceleration guy hopefully we can replace that um and then we've got miles baker he should have a couple of picks. Not the fastest safety. Decent uh, hitting the guys. Yeah, one interception, a couple of breakups as well. Uh, no sacks on the season. Two tackles for loss. 40 tackles total. So a decent season for him. And then we lose another wide receiver in Dion Fountain, who again, just a solid guy who was always seemed to be pretty dependable. Um, again, kind of went away from him this year. Only three receiving touchdowns and only 300 yards, but averaging 13 a carry, 21 a game on the season. Uh, 
five drop passes. I think most of those are usually breakups and not just stand, like typical, like ah, hit him in the hands and he dropped it. 31 yards per game on his career. We're going to miss him as well. 5'11", a little bit short, but just also solid. A right end, a right tackle. We'll lose Mateo Sudipo, another strong safety, and Aaron Diggs. So just so many guys leaving us. JT Killen, our backup middle linebacker, is gone. We lose the left guard, Will McDonald, Kendi Roberts. So a lot of players leaving. 16 in total, all to graduations. We got to hope that some people want to transfer and i do have to remember that we did pick up a, a transfer or two last year so they will be able to play next year which will help uh, but let's just go ahead and advance towards that transfer request and say a final goodbye to the uh some of the original teal boys we'll miss them so did grayson get drafted he is in the nfl he got drafted in the seventh round though which is pretty pretty rough uh did any teams just go ham alabama of course three first rounders a bunch of second third four oh my gosh that's just absurd and let's take a look at our uh two teams that played in the national championship so oklahoma the team that we played four first rounders uh <laughs> that hurt spencer rattler does end up going in the uh in the first round i didn't realize that their quarterback and their running back were 99 overall so uh, look at all this talent that they just lost. So many players in the 90s. We had like four players total. Let's see. Did Texas lose a bunch of guys as well? The three first rounders. Uh, and then some later rounds. A lot of 90 overall guys. Again, not quite as bad as Oklahoma, but they'll certainly miss that. Uh, when you lose a, a 97 overall running back, that's always going to be pretty tough. But, you know, we got our, our guy drafted. And how about this transfer request? Do we get any love? Two guys wanting to come. Uh, Matt Rhodes is worthless. <laughs> 45 overall left guard is never going to get a play for us. Uh, and he already had his red shirt season burned. But the tight end, Sean Stewart, wants to come from Wisconsin. He's six foot six, 72 overall as a true freshman. Uh, what are his stats? Not the quickest guy. He can catch pretty well. His blocking seems pretty solid. So, yeah, we will definitely allow this tight end to come. And then we can let him sit for a year and maybe redshirt him. And I think he has a very good chance to become a very solid player. So we have our transfer for the season. And now we can move to the recruiting. So technically four players will be joining the team. Um, but we lost 16. So... These recruiting battles, I really hope some of them go our way. We need some of these guys to come play for us. So let's go ahead and see uh, what's going on here. Uh, <laughs> I'm not confident at all. Let's, uh, I don't even know how to do this. We're in such a bad position. I did a terrible job recruiting this year. It's entirely on me. I kind of changed up the way that I was doing it and was like taking points away from uh, guys that we had the lead with instead of just keeping the points on them until they committed. So we don't have a crazy amount going for us, if I'm being honest. 300-point lead with Mike Shelby, the corner, who could be pretty incredible. Aaron Jenkins, we have a 1,500-point lead. He'll likely be a secondary player. 300 behind with the tackle, Anthony Moore. Antonio McBride, we're up 500. Ben Cooper, we're down 35. So you can see all of these are super close, up 35 with Jacob Means. The problem is... Where do we give the points to be able to pick these guys up? And, and who do we decide is worth the points? Aaron Jenkins, we're going to just right off the bat, give him a thousand. Um, might go a little bit higher. We might go a little bit lower, but that gives us a decent shot. And with Mike Shelby, I really want this guy. I'm going to set him right now, super early at 3,000. Um, I think... That probably won't be enough. I hope it is enough, though, but really just fighting with Texas A&M. Uh, Anthony Moore, we're down 300, so he's going to be a little bit lower on the list as opposed to Antonio McBride. We're up 500 there, so we'll give him a 1,000 to start with, uh, and then we'll just go through and kind of look at uh, what some of this stuff looks like a decent lead with larry fenner i want to give him 500 to try to hold off alabama 
That leaves us with 4,500 points left. So Michael Brigham will give 500 points to try to hold off Wake Forest. We do need to replace a couple of uh, wide receivers. And then we get into players that we are a little bit worse off with. So now it's just tough decision making. Do we go for Anthony Moore? Do we go for Ben Cooper? Um, do we go for Jacob Means? It's very, very tough decisions all around. I think we'll try to go for all three of these guys, although I don't necessarily like our chances. So what if we go 1,500 towards Anthony McBride? Maybe 2K, uh, but we'll start with 1,500. And then Ben Cooper will give 1,500 as well. That leaves us with what, like 1,000 or something? I can't do the math right now. Yeah, it leaves us with 1,000. I don't think we can extend ourselves for this many guys. I need to give Mike Shelby 500 more points just to guarantee it. I can't I can't risk losing Mike Shelby. This dude's like game changing if we pick him up. Number 3 corner in the in the nation. Aaron Jenkins, I feel kind of confident, but I kind of want to give him another 500 just to be safe. So, that's where our point stands. So, I have to decide, I think uh, on on who we try to pick up here. And I think we take the points away from Ben Cooper and we give them to Anthony Moore and Antonio McBride um, just to, to be as safe as we can be. Uh, we are at a deficit there. Maybe we take them away from Anthony Moore and give them to Ben Cooper instead. It would save us technically a couple hundred points uh, being down 300 being, being versus being down... 35 so we're gonna sit him at 2k right now um and then i think we'll let's see let's put the rest into antonio mcbride and i'm gonna hope that's enough i don't think we get all these guys i think we get two of them but i have to i don't know i screwed things up uh and so we're gonna have to live with the consequences of my bad recruiting for a season i think um, I'm sure there's something that could be done better here, but I'm just going to hope that it's the right decision. And we're going to uh, take a look real quick at our basically last place recruiting class sitting at 123rd and hope that we don't have to rely on too many walk-ons this season, but we will go to National Signing Day and hope for the best here. So we did level up, which means we got some commits. It's a shame we didn't level up before that. We would have had 1,500 more points. We got Mike Shelby. We got Aaron Jenkins. We got Antonio McBride. We didn't get Anthony Moore. Uh, but then we got Jacob Means. We got Tim Nichols. We got Larry Fenner. We got Mike Simon. Okay. We've been bailed out a little bit. Oh, wow. That's a lot of high overall players. 80, 80, 77, 76, and then a 71 and a 70. Ooh. Little sigh of relief. Those two corners are going to be just terrorizing the ACC for the next four years. So we get a five star. We get four four stars. It's a top 25 class at the end of the day. 15 guys signed. Um, that is that is seriously impressive. Let's take a look real quick. Top 25 class. We went 24. Somehow we went from three prospects signed in a transfer to 18 signed in a transfer um five four stars four three stars is very good we did have some walk-ons with the two and the ones but they'll most likely get cut and uh i mean hey we came out looking really really good after what i thought was gonna be a disaster that is as good as i could have hoped for i think um let's let's just take a look let me go ahead and go by our overall let's remove the players that we didn't get um ben cooper we were really really close on that would have been good Aaron Hill no chance there close with Michael Brigham then no, up with Mike Golden I don't expect these lower ones to be super close because we didn't really put points but I mean if we had an extra couple thousand points we could have picked up at least one more solid player but we're fine with it and this is what uh it looks like so we got like eight walk-ons which is fine because I mean look at these guys that is some serious, serious firepowers. Look at that. 80, 80, and 78 overall are all secondary players. Then we get a good defensive tackle and a defensive end. And then there's a corner uh, to mix in there as well. I'm really hoping our defense is going to be good in the next couple of years, or at least this season. Um, one thing that we did suffer a little bit with is our coach stability. 
We are only at a B plus now with the brand new coordinators, but we've been here for four years and we've renewed our contract. So that helps us out. Championship contender is now an A. It was a B plus for a lot of last season. It jumped up to an A minus late and A is great news. Um, I don't like our conference prestige at a B plus. It is now higher than the big 12, but we need to get into that A range. We need to have uh, the rest of the teams in our conference do well. That's for sure. Um, but let's just, uh, I don't know, I guess move on to the next stage. So it's on to the position changes, and this will be pretty big deal for us as we'll try to set these guys up and, and hope for the best. Uh, first off, we have one athlete in Aaron Jenkins. I'm fairly certain he's just going to play uh, a corner. We could potentially put him at safety. He would be an 81 overall free safety. For now, we'll sit him at corner, and then we'll, we'll go through and look at everything else. Quarterback-wise, Radon Randell is going to be looking okay. Very quick quarterback. I think he might be faster than Grayson already, if not close. Um, and his throw power and throw accuracy might already be above Grayson after the offseason. So good news for us there. Um, and then we've got David Williams and David West behind. Nothing changing on that front. Fullback-wise, we're still good. J.J. Barr is going to be around for a while. We pulled in a walk-on fullback in Kevin Spencer, who's only four overall below J.J. Barr, so that's going to be great. We'll just redshirt him this season, and then we'll have a pretty decent fullback by the time J.J.'s gone. A lot of wide receivers, couple of tight ends. Logan Malden, D.J. Johnson will be in their senior seasons, and we bring in the transfer Sean Stewart for next year. Um, is there a guy that we could transfer, though? I looked uh, at the uh, the best blocking for our wide receivers, and it's not good. So Tyson Mobley would be the best. He's a 71 overall tight end, but I can't afford to move him. He'll be redshirt senior Marquise, redshirt junior. But we should have 290 overall wide receivers on the season, which is nice. Logan Malden has a chance to go to a 90 overall at tight end. So I do have some interesting news. Thankfully, we have a good offensive coordinator to help these guys, but our starting uh, offensive line not looking too good. Uh, Rashad Howard's only 80 overall. Again, some of these numbers will improve, uh, so it's not going to be as bad as it looked. Willie Lampkin at 85. Robert Gray, the center, at 80. 84 at right guard in the right tackle with Kamara Kelly, looking a little bit suspect at 75. So I'm not super stoked about that, but things should improve, and that's what our offensive line will look like. Our linebacker depth is a little bit suspect. We've moved Kale to the left outside spot. Backup Vernon Fine is only 69 overall as a senior. Middle linebacker-wise, it's Will Phillips, who is only 79 overall. Uh, should improve enough to be serviceable with the backup being just a little bit behind him and Mark Washington. And on the right side, we've got Don Riley at 83 with his backup, Sean Brown. Weird way to spell Sean, but, you know, you do you. Uh, we'll hope that he looks okay. Uh, then we go to our corner. You know, our secondary should be very mediocre. And it will get good. Our corners right now, let's see. We got Manny and then Aaron Jenkins and Mike Shelby. Um, and then we go down into the 70s, so three guys at the 80 overall, but our free safety is really weak uh, at 74, and our strong safety at 78 is pretty weak. Logan Smith, uh, true freshman, and then there's a walk-on in Mike Simon, true freshman, I believe. I think he's a walk-on. Maybe maybe he's, I mean, he's a two-star, so I guess, you know, maybe not the best uh, in both of those positions. Uh, so I'm tempted to move Aaron Jenkins. I think we move him to free safety for this season just so that we have a little bit more depth there. But that's going to be our position changes. And I guess we'll just hope for the best. We'll go ahead and save those and advance towards the uh, the offseason, the fall camp training and see where we're standing now. So some big potential for us here. How many 90 overall players do we have? Oh, wow. A very solid amount. This is very good for our team. CJ Beasley goes up to 7 to a 95. We've got John Taylor at a 93. Marquise Jackson is a 92. Tyson Mobley's a 91. Sidney McRae's a 91. Logan Malden hits 90. Willie Lampkin hits 90. Manny Stokes hits 90. Emmanuel Bush hits 90. Braden Bennett hits 90. It's crazy. That is a lot of talent there. 
Oh, wow, I love it. Look at Marquise Jackson, 99 speed, 96 acceleration. If you didn't think he could get better, you have fooled yourself because he's going to be absolutely torching people this season. And I expect the same from CJ Beasley. Maybe not quite as quick, but uh, he should be really having a good season. Radon Randall goes up to an 84 overall. He's redshirt freshman season. We're going to be asking a lot for him with the start. 90 speed, 92 acceleration. The awareness, not the best, but how's the passing? Uh, okay, 85 throw power, 87 throw accuracy. I could hope for a little bit more throw power, but it's right around Grayson's level in his redshirt freshman year, so it should be up maybe to a 90. Plus, we have the offensive coordinator level up, getting that up, and, and the accuracy is, you know, going to be nearing that 90 mark. So definitely good news there. Running back-wise, again, uh, Isaiah Conley doesn't quite have the, the improvement that the other two guys had last season. They all have 99 acceleration, so all quick off the gates, and Isaiah does have the highest speed. But Brayden, kind of our speed back, CJ, the stronger guy, theoretically, um... Uh, I just, I don't know. I like what I see. We've got a good running back by committee again, but I do need to point out the fact that they're all redshirt seniors, so we're losing a lot of talent there. We will need to be looking for a very good running back in the recruiting this upcoming season. At fullback, J.J. Barr goes up to a 72, which is great news for us there. Wide receiver-wise, again, two guys in the 90s. Uh, Malcolm Williams goes up to an 85 that's good news we've got uh chad bradshaw jonathan williams Bo lamb and eric perkins they're going to be all seeing a little bit more uh time on the field this season dj johnson goes up to an 84 again logan malden sitting at 90 i expect he's going to be even better than he was before great acceleration for him how about our offensive line how much did they go up we go up to an 85 at left tackle which is great a 90 at left guard an 86 and an 83 at center an 89 at right guard and an 80 at right tackle so the right tackle being our weakest position not the best but we could probably if we needed to plug in somebody else the right guard backup maybe one of the center backups center depth is really strong all red shirt juniors though how about our defensive line at 91 with Sidney McRae and an 88 with Durham Finch in his junior season I like seeing that. John Taylor and Emmanuel Bush, 290 overall defensive tackles. The backups aren't good, so, uh, you know, we'll have to hope that their stamina is really, really good this season. But I'm liking the starting positions. Kale Mackey goes up to an 87 overall. Uh, Will Phillips at the middle linebackers, an 84, being backed up by an 81. And Don Riley is an 87, backed up by an 82. How about our corners and our safeties? This is probably one of the biggest concerns for us on defense. Uh, Manny Stokes, of course, is a 90. Charles Hart goes up to an 80. We know we have uh, that other 80 overall. We know we have, what, Mike Shelby as another 80 overall corner. And then we've got the 74 and the 68. So a little bit worrisome. But I'm thinking they'll be serviceable. I'm hoping they'll be serviceable, at least at free safety. Uh, Sean Franklin goes up to his 79, but again, we had, I can't remember the name, Aaron Jenkins maybe is what it was. I got to, it's going to take me a, a couple episodes to learn these, the new uh, freshmen's names, but uh, Sean Franklin is still two overall below him. And of course, some of those uh, new recruits, their names are going to change here in this episode in a little bit. Uh, strong safety wise, the, uh, the only returning strong safety is Jordan Thurman and he is just goes up to a 63 so we'll likely never see the field we got bryant mcintyre to 78 kicking and frederick gets to a an 80 overall kicking what are the uh kick powers for these guys 81 for frederick and for mcintyre it's a 74 so frederick will still be kicking everything for us and i expect him to be able to hit at least close to a 50 yarder this season hopefully that's not something super necessary for us go ahead and advance to uh cut some players here and how many do we have to get rid of it shouldn't be a crazy amount only four and i think that should be pretty easy there's a lot of bad players um if we can get rid of them we will juco sophomore is gonna be gone right guard's gonna be gone left guard's gonna be gone and the center's gonna be gone don't even need to think about the rest of it oh <gasps> 
I was just getting rid of people based on speed. Alt F4. Alt F4. Cannot save this. I thought I had it sorted by overall. I had it sorted by speed. Oh, please be fine. Okay, back to 74 players. What did I, what did I get rid of? Uh, okay, EJ Gibbons still wouldn't have been the end of the world. It would have really sucked to lose Willie Moyes. Uh, wouldn't have been great to lose Cole Lambert, and it would have not have been good to lose Stevie Holmes. So, thank goodness. Uh, we can now try to get rid of these players. Uh, anybody that we can get rid of down here, we're going to. Jason Swain would, I, it would be more of a liability than anything else to keep him. We can get rid of a right guard there. We can get rid of a right end. And we can get rid of a free safety. So we are... Actually, let's... Uh, free safety or do we get rid of the running back? We're going to get rid of the running back. Can't hurt our depth as too much. And he's still a freshman. 56 overall. He could be in the... You know, maybe 70 by the time he's a senior. Which wouldn't be the worst backup. But that's, that's how we meant to cut players. Thank goodness we didn't have that saved before I realized... And we can go ahead and survive, advance to the custom conferences where we will be able to reset our uh, skill tree. All right, so we'll reset the skill tree. I don't think there's a whole lot that we're going to change from what we had. Obviously, the scouting, we'll do two in a locksmith early this time. Get three into the opener. Get the royal treatment a little bit out of the way, but we just want the kitchen sink to be full. Um, we want our closer to be full. And then I guess we'll go one more into the royal treatment. Try to get our visits to be worth as much as possible. And then we will uh, start working towards... We'll, pro we'll probably go royal treatment with the next level up. And then we'll start working on that letter of intent. So that we can get that extra, what, 5,000 points hopefully for the next off so That we can avoid any sort of disaster if I do have another terrible recruiting year. But that'll be our skill tree... And you know what? Right off the bat, let me let me actually redo this. Instead of going with two in royal treatment and three in the closer, we're going to start it with three in royal treatment, two in the closer. Uh, and then as the season progresses, when we level up, we'll do the closer. That way we can have an early visit and it will be worth more. Um, you know, sometimes I like to get a week six visit in. That'll allow that to work out a little bit better for us. So with our skill tree reset, let's go ahead and advance to the preseason. So exciting. So I think for the first time, we're ranked in the preseason starting the year at number 17. Uh, should be good news for us. If we can win early and often, we can jump up really high in the, uh, in the rankings and that'll pull our conference rank up and it'll give us more... Uh, championship contender points with recruits so great news there as we will go through and do some of this preseason stuff so we will redshirt a bunch of guys and then uh we'll i guess set the depth chart and change the names of the players that we need to change so gone through and redshirted a bunch of players who really didn't matter all that much i don't think we'll change any depth chart stuff um, Beasley over Bennett still. Fullback looks fine. Wide receiver, tight end. Yeah. Totally fine with the way all that's set up. Um, backup right tackle. I like putting in Holmes there. That's pretty smart. So I'm definitely okay with the way this looks. Things could be a little bit better in a lot of places. But I mean, corner-wise, we don't look as bad as we could. Um, you know... 280s and a 90 and if they get tired you put in the free safety hopefully the free safety doesn't get tired but uh we've got aaron jenkins and then at strong safety you got logan smith so a lot of young players if we don't have like an incredible season this year i think that we'll have a great one next year uh that just makes the most sense uh obviously marquise jackson should be our return man and we're going to go, let's see, who is quick with good acceleration? Charles Hart. Um, yeah, I guess Charles Hart's going to be our backup return man behind Marquise. We just got to make sure that we have as much speed as possible on the kick and punt returns. Oh, I'm really hoping that Marquise comes out. All-American 
four returning, one best returner. It's his chance to uh, to go out and be real good again this season. Had a big one in that playoff game. Um, just, you know, tried to pull the team up with him and didn't quite have the help that he was hoping for. But that'll be our depth chart set. Let's do our custom schedules. And again, we shouldn't be having conference games week one. I have it set so that that shouldn't happen, but I guess we get to open the season against Notre Dame again. And we start three conference games on the road at Notre Dame, at Virginia, at Syracuse, and then they have a slated for UTEP. And then another conference road game. Our first conference home game is Virginia Tech in week seven. That's pretty crazy. The out of conference that it scheduled this for, Arizona State, which uh, we might keep, I think... Well, I'm trying to think. I don't know when the next college football revamped update will come out, but Pac-12 will be started there, and I want to be able to play a Pac-12 team, but I don't know if we can afford to do that. So we might have to stray away from the Pac-12 still. Um, we'll we'll face off against them in the f in, in the future, I guess. Um, we played LSU very early in the dynasty. I'm tempted to play against them, but we're going to schedule Penn State for this week instead. Uh, we're going to take it at home because, uh, well, no, I guess we can we can go deal with the Penn State. Maybe a whiteout if it's a big game <laughs> is going to be scary. Uh, I want one easy out of conference game. Maybe we play a Sunbelt team. A couple of the, the Sunbelt teams that we used to play against have been updated. So, like, is, is Troy available? Yeah, we'll play against Troy at home, but then we'll, uh, we'll play a... A decent team here for our final one we could rematch against Oklahoma but I expect to play them some other time um, Cincinnati should be a good game I'm not against playing a good g5 school kind of gives us a bad one a good one and then a good power five so we'll do that um, and again we're gonna play them at home we're gonna say we're the better team we want the good weather we don't want to go up to Cincinnati so yeah, I think that's going to be our schedule. At Notre Dame, at Virginia, at Syracuse, against Troy, at Georgia Tech, uh, against Cincinnati, against Virginia Tech, against Miami, against Pitt. So then we go on a huge homestand. And then at Penn State, and finally a bye. Very similar similar to last season with our bye games, or with our bye weeks. Why do we only have two, though? I guess the conference championship week or something counts as another one, but... We don't have buys until the end of the season, which is kind of fine. Um, I mean, we could open up the Troy game and see if there's a, a matchup available later. We could take an extra buy and just not play a, a one of these games, but that doesn't seem like us. So that's going to be our schedule. A strength of schedule, which is very good. Maybe a little bit unnecessary, but it'll help us with the rankings, I think. Um, which is so fantastic. And then we can go ahead and, I guess, do our preseason recruiting and try to have a better recruiting season this year than we did last year. So right off the bat, let's take a look at uh, some school stuff. Championship contender stays an A. Conference prestige goes up to an A-. minus. That is so big for us. Um, we need to continue to move up. So maybe I should have scheduled SEC and Big Ten teams, but... It's just good news all around. B-plus coach stability, B-stadium atmosphere. We're only on one game home winning streaks. Which kind of a sad loss there. Other things slowly going up. Two players drafted in the 4th through 7th, which is pretty uh, pretty rough compared to some of the other stuff. But uh, I think that this could be a good one. How about the top 100? You know we're always going to head here first to see if any players want to play for us. We are in first with Victor Carr, a good running back, which is great. We need one of those. Third with Ian Bain. What a name there. Um, what does he do? He looks like he also could be a little bit of a running back. Uh, his catching isn't good. He can't tackle. He can't cover. So maybe two running backs there. We are losing three. It wouldn't hurt to get two. And then a defensive tackle has us in fourth. So that's fantastic. We're going to scroll through a few of these top 100 players and try to add... A few of them to the board, you know, ones that actually like us. Uh, unfortunately, the fastest player on this board running a 4-2-6 Deion Glover won't, won't have us. He just says no. 
Um, so, you know, we'll look around and uh, I'll, I'll fill out the board and then we'll scout a couple of these guys. Oh my goodness. Well, before we do that, I mean, I just have to show how many four-star players have us first on their board. Another running back in Dion Atkins. We're going to add all these guys. Uh, I got to imagine they have playing time high up on their board. They must see... Uh, no, interesting. They must see that we're losing three running backs. So there's a lot of space coming up for them. We're going to scout them all and we'll see. Uh, corner likes us, a linebacker, a defensive tackle. There's a middle linebacker that likes us. Uh, right now, I'm only looking at four and five stars. So there's a lot of interest from these guys. Uh, and I am hoping that this goes well for us. All righty. Well, we've filled the board with 35. Let's start to scout them. I think there's going to be some really impressive guys on this list. Uh, hopefully, at least. Uh, a lot of high overall guys. I added a lot of guys who liked us. Um, well, you know, between four stars and three stars. I don't think any five stars had any interest in us, believe it or not. Um, and then a lot of guys who looked like they had decent, uh, you know, points. Like we would get a decent amount of bonus points uh, that were also good. But hoping to see some crazy scouting. Good tackle in Marcus Corbett, Jeremy Callahan. You know, I would love it if these guys wanted to go up. There we go. 79, Jeremy Harrison. Um, you know, tackle, defensive tackle, nothing special. But Jeremy Harrison, 93 speed, 95 acceleration is pretty impressive. I like the 77 catch. It's okay. 87 route running is pretty solid, though. That, that could be a dude who just gets free all the time. John Childress is uh, 81 overall defensive tackle. A lot of 80s, high 80s on his uh, stats there. How about Josh Bryant, the linebacker? Stays at a 78. Uh, pretty solid coverage there. Good tackling. Definitely fine with that. Will Dixon is a gem up to an 81 overall athlete. Oh, God, is he a quarterback? 87 speed, 85 acceleration, 90 throw power, 81 throw accuracy. He's got 80 carrying, 87 juke. This is, uh, this is a crazy guy. 79 catching. He's got some coverage. All right, Will Dixon might be... Uh, Radon's replacement eventually one day down the line Antoine Pope the corner goes up to a 77 he's pretty quick with decent coverage Caleb Peoples goes down to a 73 still looks like a solid linebacker to me good acceleration I always like acceleration on my linebackers uh you know be able to catch up to somebody off of a weird break another gem in this middle linebacker Chris Douglas he goes up to an 81 uh, again, good acceleration. 92 tackle is great. He's got good finesse moves. Um, his coverage is pretty solid. Nice and strong. I'll take it. Jesse Bowie, the D tackle, goes to a 76. Spencer Stanley at corner. Jim goes up to an 80. Another really quick guy. Good coverage. Not the best at tackling, which is a little bit uh, worrying for me, but 85 play recognition is very solid. Might be in the right place all the time. First bust with Kevin Smith. He goes down six to a 69 at D-tackle. He'll stay on the board still. Ian Bain with the cool name, the Batman villain. Uh, get one a little bit crazy, maybe. Uh, things are looking a little bit weird. Let's refresh that and go back up to the, to the top. There should be a lot of guys. Let's see, David Jackson goes down to a 71. Here's Ian Bain. He's an athlete. He goes up to 77. And he seems like either a wide receiver... Or maybe a running back to me. How about this? We found a 74 overall fullback in Ray Thompson. He does go down, dang it, to 70. I was hoping it was going to be a gem of a fullback, something crazy. Uh, good blocking. We need a fullback to replace JJ in the future. Could be him. Nick Pittman, the guard, is a gem up to another 80 overall player. Hopefully we can get like 25% of the guys that we found so far. Uh, Chris Moore, uh, tight end. We will need to replace tight end soon. Is a 73. Um, let's see. We got Jason Rollins, a linebacker, goes down to 72. And Lonnie Bryant will be our final scout of the preseason. The defensive tackle is going to stay at a 74. A couple things going up a little bit. Uh, just a, a pretty mediocre looking dude. But, I mean, if we just look at the top of this board by overall, that is a lot of high overall players. If we could get, again, 25% of those, I think we'd be okay with that. So now we just have to edit a couple of names on a couple of players, and then we can move on to the regular season. So only one player this season is going to have their name changed. Apparently the uh, the administration's office has figured out 
uh, a decent way to, uh, you know, rein these guys in. I definitely have already gone past him. He's an 80 overall, true freshman, and it's our new corner, Mike Shelby. Now, Mike apparently uh, might be somebody a little bit famous. Some of you might recognize the name, but uh, instead of Mike Shelby, he will now be known as Leon Sandcastle. So with all of that done, let's just head now towards the start of the season. Uh, wow. Uh, I, I think that we are poised to do very, very well this year. We're looking, I don't know, we're ranked to start the season. We have some ridiculously good players. A lot of players over 90 overall. Radon Randall's going to get his first snaps as a as a teal boy and then i think marquis jackson has a chance to win the heisman with how many kicks he's planning on returning at three preseason all americans five preseason all conference players it was a little bit of extra xp and we we start off our season with a, a top 10 matchup and one that's maybe going to become a rivalry for us as we face off against notre dame we have beaten them the last two times that we played those were both last season so We'll see if we can make it three in a row. We are not favored to win. They are an A-plus. We are just an A-minus team. But I think that's up with an A-plus offense. Sheesh. That looks good. Unfortunately, though, that's going to have to wait until next episode. So if you enjoyed the offseason, if you think that maybe we came out ahead after losing the players that we did and picking up the ones that uh, are new, feel free to like the video uh, and down in the comments. I want to know what you guys think. I want to see some predictions for this upcoming season. Is it a national championship year? Are we going to make the uh, the conference championship even? I'm curious to know your guys' thoughts. And while you're down there doing those two things, of course, you can subscribe and then head to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links for my Twitter and our community Discord. And as always, there's going to be a link for the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. That being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.